Today's video is how to bind a receiver with your TX16S using the internal 4-in-1 module. So let's get started. Binding process is fairly simple. However, there's a few things that we'll go over that you may come across during the process. One is assigning a receiver ID number. And two, some receivers require a RF signal tune to get the best results. I'm using a Spectrum 8 channel today which is a DSM protocol. Those receivers don't have the RF ID tune. However, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you briefly where that's at on another protocol and how you adjust. So to bind up to a receiver, we're going to push the model button. We've just got a blank model in the radio. As it says model 01, you can put the name there if you want to. Scroll up a little bit, click on internal RF. You will get a drop down box. Click on multi, and you'll notice the default is fly sky. So you'll scroll on the list to DSM. Now on this list, you might be thinking, well, BD, what is DSM and DSM RX? DSM is when you're connecting to an actual receiver, like we have on the bench or you would have in a plane. And DSM RX is when you're using the built-in module as a receiver, such as a buddy box situation. So we'll push DSM. Change the RF protocol to auto. That way it sets it to the protocol that it needs for DSM because there's different refresh rates and some other stuff, and it's just easiest by pushing auto. Everything else you're going to leave the same. In channel range, I would always put that at 12 or the highest number because if you have something like this receiver where it has virtual channels for AS3X and gain control, if you have that set to 8, when you go and try to set those up on 9 and 10, for example, on an 8-channel receiver, then you won't be able to actually function those features because it won't see the switches on those channels. Here it says ID is unique. That means on this receiver number, there is no other model in the radio that uses that number. The reason why you want to do that is so you don't accidentally change to a different model in the radio and be able to control the same receiver, and that could result in a crash or dangerous results. So I could use zero. However, you always want to assign it because zero is a default and you can see where you put a bunch of them on the same channel. Now, if you do select a receiver number that's already in use, you'll have a red caption come up and tell you that it's in use. You can see here ID used and model zero two. Now, if this is your first receiver you're setting up, you won't have that message. However, I just wanted to point it out when you start setting up multiple models, you'll be aware that there's a red caption that comes up if you try to use the same one. So we're gonna to go to receiver one, click outside the screen, and then you notice we got the bind button. Now we're gonna power the receiver up. Once the receiver's powered up, whether you're using a receiver battery, like I am on the test bench, or it's a fuel powered plane, or the ESC powers the receiver up, you can now push the bind button and that will make the receiver flash. Once the receiver is flashing, it's now in bind mode. Next step is just to push bind on the radio. The radio will make a chirp, and then when the light goes solid on the receiver, it's bound up. Now we've got our receiver and radio bound together and ready for installation in the plane or to hook up your servos and finish your install. Now I'm going to show you briefly what I was talking about earlier, the RF tune adjustment. I'm going to scroll to the top. I'm going to change it to free sky. Here you see RF frequency fine tune. Over to the right it says RSSI zero decibels. You want to adjust this number value here to where it loses signal on both sides. This goes negative 127 to positive 128. So let's say that you go and adjust this to the left and you stop at 50. Well, you adjust it to the right and you go to negative 50. You take the median between those two numbers, which in this case, it would be zero. And the way that you know that you run to the certain number and it's going to be different for different receivers 
is when it loses connection. This RSSI number will lower down to a negative value. And when it gets to a certain point, it's going to lose signal and the radio will say telemetry loss. That's your end point on one side. And as I mentioned, you repeat it on the other side. Go with the number that's in the middle. So if it was zero on one side and negative 50 on the other side, you'd use a value of negative 25. Now we've completed how to set up the bind process for different receivers. If you found this video informative, go ahead and push like below. If you want to see future TX16S tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate y'all watching and we'll see you on the next one.